and I first met you, I was like, oh, wow, he looks super strong. Like he must be in like security or something. And then you went on stage and you started doing comedy. And I was like, man, he and he's also funny. Like this is this is <laughs> fantastic. But uh, I got a text. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I got a text from a coworker of mine and she was like, I think I recognize him from, I don't know if you used to work a bar somewhere in Illinois at some point in your life. And she was like, I was a bartender oh, okay. in Edwardsville. Okay, yeah. well, apparently you made her a few drinks in her day. Now she's married with a baby. But literally like, uh, she goes, I know who he is. I said, oh, well, he's a famous comedian now. Find him on iTunes, Pandora, all of that. So you yeah. actually got recognized for your blue collar work. So congratulations. <laughs> that happens a lot, yeah. It's so funny because I literally just, right before I called into this podcast, I was recording a commercial. Like, it's weird because we're making, like, a commercial and we have to do it from home because you can't have a crew. So they just dropped yeah. a bunch of film stuff off at the house and me and Tina are, like, trying to, like, <laughs> cobble together some. And the script was Blue Collar Guy. Shut Literally, up. the script just said Blue Collar Guy talking about his court case. And it's, Oh, like, my God. Really? I didn't even have to audition. Yeah, I didn't even have They just said, they're like, this is, just do it. We trust you. <laughs> Um, so there's times, there's times it works in my favor for sure. And I've had that happen a lot because I wear like a black, I pretty much just wear like, I'm like a fat Steve jobs, you know, like I just, uh, I gave up on anything striped or colored as the weight went on over the years. So now it's just like, I don't, uh, there's too many decisions to make in a day. So it's like, I have my closet looks like a serial killer. I have like 18 black V necks. <laughs> And the same five pairs of Levi's 514 straight leg pants all hung in a row. It's like Homer Simpson's closet. Oh but because I wear it all the time, every I've been in so many comedy clubs where I'm like waiting to go on stage. I'll be in the back of the room, like trying to get my head right, you know, before I go on stage. And people will be like, hey, man, can I bring my drinks in here? Or, uh, and I'm like, I don't know, man, ask somebody. He's like, oh, you work here, right? So like, I'm constantly mistaken for security in the back of the room. So I, and then people would see me after the show and be like, oh, yeah, sorry, man. We definitely thought you were like just – it actually happened to me when I met Tom Segura. Shut up, I did really? A weekend. It was hilarious. I did a weekend with Mark Norman, and mm -hmm. Tom was doing a show at the pageant. So we did our shows at Helium, and we went to the pageant, and I was excited because I'm like, I'm going to get to meet Tom Segura. This is dope. And gotcha. my friend Josh Potter is his opener. And we went backstage at the pageant. And we went in the green room talking to Tom, and we're all. Uh, I made him laugh a couple times, and I was like, you know, like you put that in your heart as a comic. You're like, yeah, I know what I, I know what's up. <laughs> and then somewhere in the conversation, he's like, uh, I never really introduced me. He knew my name, and he's like, hello. And the conversation came, and he's like, so what's up, man? You like, are you like the door guy at Helium or what? And I was like, uh, and he goes, you're funny. And I was just like, no, I'm not. I'm a comedian, man. And he goes, oh, that makes sense. He goes, I thought you were pretty funny for a door guy. And I was just like, even comedians don't recognize that I'm a comic. They're always just, they just assume I'm there on some sort of security detail. 